and welcome to this mini review of Grapple Dog, which is available now on the Nintendo Switch and PC. A big thank you goes out to Super Rare Originals for sending me a review copy ahead of the game's release. Now, grappling hooks and video games go hand in hand. From the traditional grapples of Tenchu, the arm-mounted ones of Sekiro, the futuristic ones of Bionic Commando, or even the slightly more unorthodox ones like Spider-Man's webs. It's just such a cool way of moving yourself through game worlds, and it allows for some awesome level designs and obstacles to be designed around this unique moveset. Of course, humanoid animals and video games also go together like peas in a pod too, so what happens when you combine these two things? You get Grapple Dog. Grapple Dog is a 2D action platformer where you play as Pablo, a dog on a mission to save the world from an evil robot that he accidentally activates after falling into a hole at the start of the game. In order to do this, he needs to collect four mysterious artefacts which are created by a mysterious inventor before the robot gets his hands on them first. First. It's a basic plot setup for a platformer, full of MacGuffins that just give you something to collect kinda for the sake of it, but it serves as enough motivation to get started and enter the game with an objective in mind. Grapple Dog isn't really trying to break any new ground with its structure either. Consisting of a world map where you freely control a boat around on an overworld, and from there you enter a linear path of levels, making your way to the end of them, and then unlocking the next one. Within these levels are hidden gems to collect, which will open up boss levels at the end of each world. When you beat these, you'll be allowed to move on to the next world. This is all standard stuff that we've seen in games like Super Mario 3D World, Rayman Legends, Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, and other similar games, but that isn't to say that Grapple Dog doesn't have any tricks up its sleeve to make it stand out. We all know that with this sort of game it's all about the gameplay, and I'm extremely happy to say that Grapple Dog is extremely fun in this department. The movement is fast and snappy, with you being able to wall jump, body slam, and of course, use a grappling hook to swing around. This grapple mechanic is a major focus of the game, and is rarely where the game becomes more interesting than a standard run-of-the-mill platformer. By using the grappling hook you can gain momentum and fly off in different directions, chaining together the wall jumps, other grapple swings, and bouncing on enemies, all in one combo. And it's this joy of movement that makes the game feel amazing to play. The graphics are a standout feature of the game too, being almost reminiscent of Game Boy Advance graphics, but of course much cleaner and in crystal clear HD. The backgrounds at times can be gorgeous, and there's lots of little interactive elements which make the worlds feel grounded. Like here where you can knock coconuts out of trees and watch them bounce around. I love little details like this because it shows that a huge amount of care was put into the development process. Even outside of the main levels, there's a few nice little extra things which give the game so much charm as well as more variety too. When on the overworld screen, you can enter the boat you're sailing on and walk around, talking to your two friends and going into the rooms to learn more about them. You can even enter your own room and play a video game within a video game. I always love it when you can do that, I actually found myself playing this boomerang game for quite a while because it actually turned out to be quite addictive. Another little detail that just had to be in the game is that when you get 100% in a level, you can give Pablo a pat on the head to congratulate him, and it's just adorable. There's also unlockable bonus levels which feature different objectives, some tasking you with getting through an obstacle course, others with collecting all of the items in the area, and others telling you to defeat all of the enemies in a level. These bonus areas were actually some of my favourite moments of the entire game because I loved the challenge that these presented. Some of the timings here are actually pretty strict, and some of the levels require mastery of the grappling mechanic too. The music is another thing that I like about Grapple Dog, being this funky, upbeat score which fits the overall childlike adventurous tone of the game perfectly. I like this trend recently with game soundtracks having these little vocal samples in the music. Astro's Playroom and Splatoon do this, and I think it sounds awesome and makes the music somehow even catchier. Maybe that's because there's a section where you can sort of sing along to it. I wanna get into it. 
The one thing with the music is that there aren't actually that many tracks, and a lot of them are repeated in multiple levels within a particular world. This is a bit of a shame because I feel like they eventually become slightly repetitive and make the levels blend into each other a bit more than they otherwise would, but this isn't a huge deal at all really, considering that the music is pretty great to begin with. I just want more of it. An odd little thing I picked up on as well is that on the Switch, for practically every single game, the A button is select and the B button is back. In Grapple Dog though, for some reason this is actually reversed and it threw me off quite a few times when navigating menus. I don't know exactly why this throws me off so much though, because you'd think that this would feel natural considering that on PlayStation consoles, the X button is always select and it's in the same place as B on the Nintendo ones. But something just doesn't feel right about this on Nintendo consoles. I have the exact same issue with Dark Souls on the Switch as well. It takes me forever to adapt to A being back, but this is obviously a minor nitpick. If I was to say one overarching negative thing about Grapple Dog, it would be that I feel like each level could have maybe done a little bit more to make themselves stand out. Don't get me wrong, the levels do have gimmicks to keep things fresh, like sliding grappling surfaces, underwater sections, parts where platforms and walls will disappear if a timer runs out, but a lot of these gimmicks are repeated a fair amount and each level in a world looks quite similar to each other too, as well as sharing the same music. So the end result is that it can feel a little bit repetitive in parts. But just as it might start to feel too repetitive, something brand new will rear its head, like this dragon robot thing that follows you around the level and can't be killed. So this can easily be overlooked to an extent. The combat also feels a little bit too basic at times, with enemies mostly just being defeated by jumping on their heads. I feel like maybe implementing some kind of Sonic-like homing attack where you use the grapple and then bounce high off of enemies to gain speed and height might have been more interesting. I found that whenever there was an enemy, I was kind of stopping in my tracks and breaking the flow of movement, which is a shame. Some of the later enemies are better though, like these flying ones which you can grapple onto, or these weird dragon block things that move towards you when you enter the site, but you can use them as makeshift platforms if you bait them out. But the basic floor-based enemies are maybe a bit boring to encounter. Enough with the negatives now though, because there's so much to love here, and so much replay value too, that I can hardly really complain. When you've finished a level, you're incentivized to go back and get the collectibles you missed, and then when you've done that, you could try out your hand at a time trial to compete to see who can get the best score on the leaderboards. The time trials serve as an important feature too, because this is where your skill with the movement is rarely tested, and it's here where the game shows its true potential. There's loads of charming and funny dialogue, the characters are cute and bursting with personality, the graphics are colourful and detailed, the music is straight up bopping, and the core gameplay with the grappling hook and chaining together different movements feels fluid and keeps the game fun for the whole thing. So is Grapple Dog worth getting? Absolutely! While it most likely won't appeal to everyone, if you're a fan of 2D platformers with a focus on fast momentum based movement, then this is definitely the game for you. The amount of little details and extras sprinkled throughout the experience really elevate the game above many of its indie brethren. This is a highly polished game that I'm definitely going to be playing a lot of to try and get 100% completion. It's pretty great, and if it looks interesting to you, you should definitely give it a go. For now though, if you enjoyed the video, give it a like, subscribe to see more stuff like this coming soon, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!